Hello and welcome to The Grade Cricketer, brought to you by ACCO, India's leading digital insurance company. You know the drill and how well they support TGC. I need something to support my soul after watching what just happened in the cricket. That's the series gone. That's the summer over. England had a chance to win this test match, did they? I don't know. I don't know when they're going to win again in any format. How can you let Australia win the T20 World Cup? How can you let all this happen? Now all the players are out. No, we'll still have a stick. We'll still bowl one side of the wicket or some shit. It, it was rubbish. Pez, you're in Adelaide. Uh, by the way, Australia won the toss, had a bat. Uh, the day finished two for 221 in that order. Pez, give it to me in ground terms. Actually, well, good day, everyone. I've just been to the Scouts convention. Um, <laughs> so I'm a, a scout mm. leader. Uh, yeah. In ground terms, oh, mate, I tell you what, a, a can of payload doesn't miss. Yeah. Uh, like over ground oh, yeah. in terms of ground ground terms and good to everyone who um who was out there and and particularly the guys dressed in banana suits uh, who accosted me and collared me as I, I tried to get home with my father yeah um and to everyone else and to, and to people on twitter who asked me if i both had a members ticket and um whether i wanted a bag with my <laughs> much appreciated uh it's always um, good to crowdsource always good to crowdsource what can i say he goes look yeah to be quick, Adelaide, Adelaide Oval stood up, perfect weather, just, you know, 27 degrees, not a cloud in the sky. The hues of the, the light were fantastic. They were perfect as the light went, as, as the sun went down. Um, everyone was in exactly the mood as you'd expect. No one had been out for, you know, three years. We had to go through about 27 speed bumps to get into the city, but we got there. Uh, it, was, it was sensational. Everyone held up there to the bargain, uh, including England, who played um, body line um, <laughs> with a third grade bowling attack. <laughs> well, mate, it sounds like you're an absolute day out. Meanwhile, I was at home uh, doing uh, BBC Breakfast World News TV or some shit. Uh, that's actually a real thing that happened. I was on some BBC World Service for some reason talking about the cricket whilst Pez was sinking cans of pale aid uh, and getting a bag with his dad, allegedly. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's get into the three things, Pez. Uh, now, you, of course, went through the same protocols that Pat Cummins and friends had to, uh, but I'm not sure if you've caught this, but he's actually out of the test match uh, because he sat next to someone uh, who, who, who tested positive. Uh, everyone's vaccinated. Australia's vaccine rate's like 80%. South Australia's 85, double jab. New South Wales, 95%. All the players double jab. They're isolating. Stark and Lyme are in the same restaurant, but they were outside. And, and so that's all good. So um, there's definitely no deals going on there with the South Australian government just to get the game going. Um, but uh, yeah, Cummins. Uh, Cummins can't play. And that's, uh, that's his last test as captain, I reckon. Well, um, Barmy Army, that's obviously a stitcher um, and, and the work of MI6. And uh, yeah, there were journos in our hotel who said it was a Sydney grade cricketer uh, and were inquiring as to whether it was me. I can confirm that uh, it was not me having to do with Pat Cummins, though I like that people think that might have been possible yeah, yeah, um, yeah. that he'd be anywhere near me. Uh, but um, <laughs> what can we say? You know, they should have... Um, they should have tried to, you know, they should have tried to stitch up Marnus and Warner as well, mate. But uh, yeah, <laughs> otherwise, yeah. I sort of feel like Australia's going to be okay. I'm having a real hard time taking you seriously with that hat. <laughs> we had a good day at the Scouts convention. We did a couple of ropes and stuff, a couple of carabiner stuff. Yeah. Um, I'd, Helps I'd my sailing. ladies cross the road, get a bag. Yeah. Uh, Kayla, yeah, help them with their bags. Dip, dip, dob, dob. Uh, okay. Um, let's talk about Marnus and Dave Warner. Uh, Dave Warner, if he was if he was if he was lucky in the first innings of the Gabba, he certainly wasn't lucky in this innings. I think he was superb. I think that the, the Dave Warner that we've seen of yesteryear, where he you know he scores so quickly and he's aggressive from ball one, and like I don't think that I don't think we see that player anymore. But we see a fucking world class batter who has just sort of molded his game, and uh, and he's he's gone two nineties in a row now, missed out. On, on tons both innings. I mean, this guy's a fucking great of Australian cricket, and he's doing the he's doing the business against. Uh, but it actually looked pretty hard against Broad early on. He was really patient, you know. Uh, the, it, it was not the Warner that we've come to know. This is sort of late years Warner that we're seeing. He, mm. he goes through the gears. He was one off thirty three. He survived a searching examination early. He, he was starting to cash in. Later in the afternoon, uh, I, I thought he was injured at the start of the day in, in the sense that he wasn't sort of taking off for runs or looking to put pressure back on the bowlers. But he, he looked impregnable, you know. At the Gabber, he, he gave away a few chances. He looked really, 
he, I wouldn't say he was fluent at the start of the day, but mm. he looked like his plan was working. And uh, it was it, it was a really good innings to watch. I really I really enjoyed David Warner's innings. Just just for it was it was just such it was such a test match innings, you know. Mm. And it's given Australia a foundation where England, you know, well England's tactics afforded them two wickets today. They've got 18 yeah. more to get, but a lot a lot of that was due to the technical precision of Warner and um and Marnus as well. Mm. Yeah, I mean, he probably he was probably suffering from um, Cummins's COVID early on. That's he just to get through that. Then once that passed, he was uh, now Man, uh, Manus, We've said this before, Pez. All of his all of his uh, test hundreds in Australia, but this guy is a fucking. I mean, the way he shapes the team now, batting at three, he's he's a, he's a world class number three bat for Australia. And you got runs from Warner, so you throw you you open a three four is a fucking pfft, looks the absolute business at the moment. Uh, and uh, this guy is a guy who's going to score legacy runs against England. That's the series, the biggest series, England at home, England away next biggest, and then and then a drop off to probably India's next biggest one after that. But this is a guy who's just going to be so focused like Smith on scoring runs against England, and uh, that's what we're seeing. I mean, he looks fucking really hard to get out. He was immersed in every ball today, Barnett. Mm. He, um, he looked like he bat for four or five days. Uh, he did give away a few chances. And in fact, being in the ground when Joss Butler dropped the, the sitter with mm. Marnus on 95, they were, people were laughing as in it, it wasn't just a cacophony of noise. It was people laughing and you could hear, <laughs> you could hear it. You could hear it echo yeah. uh, around the ground. And then obviously they Bronx cheered every yeah. ball that he gloved after that. But um, that, that laugh at the time was, um, that was piercing. That was, that was piercing stuff. Yeah, piercing Brosnan. Um, I, uh, I'll get into the, <laughs> That was a stretch. I will get into the last thing then, Pez. How fucked are England? And I ask that more broadly than just in this test match, in this series, uh, holistically, because that moment at the end, that's the end of the summer. I mean, like there were moments throughout the day, just the tactics and how they played. Nate, for me, that's fucking, that's it. Just like, cause mate, that, that, that laughter that you, that you heard at the ground that was coming through the TV. That's, that is so demoralizing. That makes you so flat two wickets for the day, but mate, just in a whole sense, there's so many complaints about the way England bowled, the lengths they bowled or um, the team they picked to the Gabba. And then there's always an answer to that, but it's like, oh, well, you, yeah, you know, it doesn't matter if you do this, if you drop your catches, it doesn't matter who, you, if you pick this team, if you're not scoring a front, this team is close to being good, but they're so fucking shit at like one aspect, at least in every single test match, they let themselves down, whether it be bad fielding, bad catching, not enough first innings runs. Don't pick the wrong team. They pick the wrong team. The spinner doesn't play well enough. The pace attack is all samey. They've got injuries. Like there's just some aspect, at least one aspect in every test match where they fucking dog shit. And like, you can't do this in Australia. Like it's just hard to win. I'm not saying Australia are this fucking world beating team. It's a good team, but it's not a great team. It's just... And I'm saying this like represent like when I, when I when I say this, it sounds like I'm fucking beating the chest and I'm waving the flag for Australia, like like you know punching down on England. I'm saying this is like as a almost as like a frustrated England fan. Like it's just it must be excruciating to watch because the plans have all been built up for this series the last two years. How, like like what are they achieving? I don't understand. The whole thing is supposed to be the you know accumulate uh, of, of like. Uh, you know, this is supposed to be the pinnacle of the last two years of planning. And it's fucked. The team's shit. <laughs> they can't catch. There's no first innings run still. And they're all injured. Thoughts? Yeah, you reckon they sat down to plan like a couple of years ago, right in the middle of the whiteboard, which, yeah, we're going to get Joe Root bowling round the wicket, uh, <laughs> trying to get someone caught a leg slip. We're going to gonna bowl leg theory, Joe Root. Mm. Um, maybe four guys on the off, on, yeah. on the on side, a couple behind square as well. Yeah, side, we'll try and get we'll try and get we'll try and we'll buy him to just get the overs in because uh, we'll try and get the pink ball so we can get like a couple of those before the end of play. So that's that's what we'll do. It was very cynical stuff. I, I, I look, they looked to me at the ground like a team that had lost the game uh, at the Gabba in the first session and were desperate not to do the same mm. here. They looked like a team that had decided we want to get ourselves into the match by playing and praying. On Australia's um, willingness to be patient, I think they found that you know mm. world-class players like Warner and Manus are not going to be tempted, and um, and even that temptation was a poor temptation. This wasn't forty days, forty nights. Jesus, shit, was saying 
it's just kind of like coming for coming in for a couple of two dollar bourbons, you know, at the World yeah. Bar. Uh, yeah. And there's a couple of there's a couple of drug dealers in the corner from the mafia. You know, there's John Ibrahim. Look, I don't think I want to go in there. Why is there broken glass on the floor? You know, why have you got a gun at the? Why have you got a gun at security? I don't want to go into this bar. It was hardly tempting what they were doing. I thought yeah. just just at the ground. You know, it was, but it was it was very attritional. And I did. I thought Warren and Manus, you know, did that well. But England were. Um, I, th- I thought their tactics were quite cynical. Um, yeah. They certainly weren't a team that looked like they were um, proactively trying to get themselves twenty wickets with good bowling. And turned out they'd taken two. They got eighteen to go. Yeah, can you bowl the stumps? Can you can you not bowl with a three six field? I mean, I know these these batters are they they put you off your game and that's deliberate. But like. Fuck me, it was grim today. Hashtag RCDC brought to you by ACCO, our dear friends, and we thank them for supporting us, and you should support ACCO if you're in India. Uh, Tom Melville tweeted, Hashtag RCDC, I was explaining to my uninitiated partner what a humiliation burns a zero in the first innings was when she asked, do England have a pantheon of Australian Ashes fuck-ups they cackle about at the start of their summer, Naz and Harmy? And I don't know. Do you? This, this feeds in nicely, Pez, into what we're talking about here because um, we learned during the week that Chris Silver was talking about, well, when Burns was bowled first ball, we were actually, uh, we'd actually prepared for this because we'd spoken about, well, what happens if you lose a wicket first, first ball of the test match? What? What are you talking about? Fucking hell. Grim, man. Grim. Like, what's that environment? Like, what are they doing in the hotel? Is anyone talking to Josh Butler yet? Fucking hell. I feel sorry for all of them. Uh- I, I just thought I was looking at a team that parked the bus today. I thought it was <laughs> if, if, park, if park the bus cricket exists, yeah. that's what this was. This was let's come and see if we can nick a one nil. You know, yeah. we're, we're, yeah. we're not we're not throwing anybody forward. We're not trying to take any risks. We honestly want to just get ourselves into the game and see if we can somehow wingle something mm. um, without really knowing what it is. It was a four samey kind of seamers. Um, it was it, it. There was a lot of people at the ground who were less than impressed with the just general attractiveness of the cricket, which was a result of the, the tactics that England brought. I do think, though, he goes that I've talked about slice and dice before. I think whichever approach they take, whatever selections they make or tactics they use, they're going to come up short because the opposition, everything is zero sum and the opposition has better players um, and they're going to find those and expose those, um, those weaknesses every time. Well, let's see if England can nick something on the break tomorrow when Australia resume at two for 221. Uh, they'll probably score 400, then declare and England will have to bat at night against Mitchell Stark, et cetera, et cetera. You know how this story goes, sprayed pegs, et cetera, et cetera. Pessy lad, thank you so much for taking the time for joining us in Adelaide, for joining us in Adelaide. It's just me running this show here apparently by myself. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow, of course, and all throughout the Ashes series. Uh, so click like, click subscribe. Thank you very much to those who are joining us on Patreon. We'll see you guys tomorrow. What are we going to see? Nick, something on the break. I don't know. Fuck me. Get in touch if you want to learn how to sort of tie some knots. I'm a scout teacher. I'm a scout teacher. I'm a scout teacher. <laughs>